outside. Hurry! But I don't understand. What's going on? I'll explain I... everything in a moment. Just now, shh! Okay, we weren't followed. We can't be too careful. F followed by who? What do you mean it's been five years? How on earth are we in... Where'd you say we were? The Isle of Crete, 72 BC. Oh, my head's so fuzzy. I can't think. You're right. experiencing post-temporal displacement sickness. Here, drink this. Post... post what? Post-temporal displacement sickness. A sudden, violent displacement from one timeline to another. You're lucky I found you when I did. A temporal shift like that can rewire a person's identity. I spent my first two years here as Milos, humble farmer and merchant. A few more minutes and we might have lost you. The last thing I remember... The last thing I remember, I was in Grandpa's house. I was in Grandpa's house putting the watch back. And then Dimitri... Oh no, Dimitri, Dad, he... Destroyed the watch, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, that's what we figured. You must have been blasted here in the explosion. Oh, son, I cannot say how good it is to see you. I have been so worried. Uh, it's good to see you too, Dad. I... Mmm. Mmm. Th this is good. What is this? Orange soda? Wait. Orange soda? <laughs> yeah. We got anything you could want. Uh, orange soda, root beer, lots of Coke products, and no Pepsi, though, unfortunately. Wait. Didn't you say it was 72 B.C.? I... What is that? Is that an airship? Like, from World War One? I? I... And a traffic jam? Oh, yeah, the 415. It's always backed up this time of day, but it's always this time of day now, so it's always backed up. I don't understand what's going on. Uh, it's all a bit complicated, but we have work to do, son. The three of us may be the only people in the entire history of the universe that are awake and can help. The three of us? Wait, did someone else make it? Navy, Arthur, oh, please tell me Jess is okay. No, no, even better, we have someone I trust with my life. Okay, well, who is it? John, I got the parsnips for the soup tonight. Did you get the... Oh, why, if it isn't Prince Alexander. What? <laughs> well, he took that well. <laughs> the Time Travelers Radio Show, presented by WPNR and Radio City in New York. After a terrible deed that rocked the very foundations of the space-time continuum, five brave individuals, John, Alex, Jessica, Navy, and Arthur, travel through space and time to retrieve the one item that can restore balance to it all, a small pocket watch from the clutches of the dastardly evildoer, Victor. Now trapped in the 1940s with communication systems down, the team tells their story as a sci-fi radio adventure in the hopes of being rescued and saving the world. This is the Time Traveler's Radio Show. Today's adventure, Trip the Loop Fantastic. When tripping any loop, you'll want to look your best. Today's episode is sponsored by Leibowitz & Sons patent-pending beauty mask. Just 30 minutes a day will keep the rash away. Now, on with the show. you? There, there. Now just relax. You've been asleep for almost an hour. Ugh. I feel so fuzzy. I had the strangest dream. I dreamt that we were stuck in Greece with our sworn arch nemesis. It was horrible. <laughs> well, not to worry. You're safe now in 72 BC with good old Victor. 72 BC? Victor? What? Expecting someone else? <laughs> what are you doing here? Where's my father? What have you done with him? I imagine he's working on the soup. I wasn't expecting three, so I'm not sure if I got enough parsnips. So... Parsnips? Parsnips? <laughs> you expect me to leave parsnips? Where is he? You tell me where he is right now, or I'll... Or I'll... Use this. A soup spoon. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do, ladle me to death? Oh, you bet I'm going to. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, you <laughs> Give me that. Oh, what on earth are you two doing? He started it. But did not. He started it. He started it. Both of you, stop. 
But, Dad, it's Victor. Believe it or not, son, Victor is on our side now. Like I said, I trust him with my life. Okay, somebody better tell me what's going on right now because I am freaking out. Okay, okay, but just put the spoon down. There. Why don't we all just sit down and enjoy a nice bowl of soup? Great idea. Victor? Alex? All right. I'm sitting. Now what is going on? It all started after the Minotaur got me. Goodbye, John. I had never felt anything so painful. It was like I was being stretched through time. I didn't know where I was, when I was. And then suddenly I woke up here. Oh. <coughs> oh. Milos, hey Milos. What? Milos, you all right? You look like you just fell from the sky. Oh. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm a fine. Okay, well, let's go. We've got the money to make. Oh, oh, right. The money to make. And thus the life of Milos, humble farmer and merchant, began. Milos? That's how the Minotaur works, you see. It will supplant you rather violently from your current timeline to another. The sudden shift causes you to lose your reality. The Minotaur then feeds off the Paradox energy. Well, I suppose you'd know all about that. Easy. <laughs> Life as Milos was simple, yet enjoyable. But deep down, I knew something wasn't right. John, wake up. John, wake up. Now, my world seemed normal, but somehow I knew it wasn't. Hey, Milos! Check out my new hover bike! Isn't this the year of a 72 BC? <laughs> it continued that way until one day, something snapped me out of it. John! Are you going to buy something or no? Perhaps. Uh, what did you say your name was again? I am Milos! Milo. <laughs> Wake up. Wake up, you great buffoon. Do not hurt Milos. You are not Milos. You are John. Do you hear me? You are John. <laughs> More like slapped you out of it. Wait, how did you get here? Uh, well, after our titter in the Minotaur's lair, I got displaced here just like John. And you didn't lose your memory because? Oh, well, I'd been planning my coup with the Minotaur for ages. Uh, you recall, don't you, Alex, my evil plan? I do. Easy. In preparation for being attacked by my own monster, I engaged in a variety of mental exercises to keep fresh. When I landed, I simply shook it off. How convenient. Either way, Victor was able to get me home and <sighs> nurse me back to health. Why are you always worried about the watch? It could be used so much. It could be used for profit. We could we could profit even so much. This is completely. But we didn't have long to reminisce. John, are you aware that our argument appears to have changed locales? Yes. Hey, Milos, check out my new hover bike. Wait, what? Time was repeating over. And what was worse, there were major anomalies. Large chunks of different times and places all bound together. Time was dying. Dying? Time can't die. Can... can it? Oh, yes. The time loop, the colossal anomalies, all very bad signs. When Dimitri destroyed the watch, time was shattered. And in an attempt to repair itself, reality has banded together in whatever large chunks it can with time loops around it to keep everything tight. Annoyingly tight. What do you mean? Mm, time is sealed off in little balls. No portals, no gaps. Essentially, a prison. A prison? How do we get out? 
Ah, not to worry, young Alexander. That is precisely what your father and I have been working on for the past three years. Here, finish your soup. We'll show you after. Shh, quiet. But, oh, there's a good lad. Milos, it's the council, Milos. We'd like a word with you. They've never come out here before. Milos, we need to have a word. What do we do? Milos, oh, Milos. Not to worry. We're just about at that time. What is happening? Milos, oh, Milos. Oh, my head. Where am I? What the? Alex, Alex, are you all right? Ooh, it can be a wild experience the first time. What happened? Hey, Milos, check out my new hover bike. Yes, yes, very nice. The time loop hit and reset everything. It came earlier than usual, though. But who were those people at the door? Well, if we were in jail, those were our jailers. Come on, on your feet, shake it off. <laughs> oh, I, I hate it when it drops me off across town. Jailers? The Time Walkers. Time Walkers? Oh, yes. They're everywhere. Give it some time. You'll spot them. What do they want? Us, I imagine. They're not happy about what happened. Not in the least. Victor and I think we can fix everything, but leaving is a non-starter for them. Well, what do we do? Let's not talk here. Follow us. We'll explain. I'll go on ahead. I, I need something to eat. I didn't get to finish my blasted soup. <laughs> Dad, you still haven't told me... Why on earth are you trusting Victor? It's been five years for him, son. He's changed. We've had time to work things out. Will you trust me on this? I... Victor mentioned something to me when we were in the labyrinth together. What? I... It's nothing. All right. Well, let's show you our plan and we'll go from there. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, why are we all the way out here again? All part of my evil plan to toss you off this cliff here. Oh my, so touchy. Don't you know a joke when you hear one? Do you? Easy. Ah, the enthusiasm of unbridled avarice. What? A very rich man with a plane. That's Howard Hughes, a very rich and eccentric businessman from the 20th century. Oh, I've read about him. Wait, he's here too? All of time and space is bleeding together. Everyone's here. Come on, just in this cave. Oh, I know that look. I'll walk in front so I can't pull any funny business. Come on, son, right this way. There, just a few steps more, and stop. Okay, nobody move. I'll hit the lights. Ah. Ta-da! <laughs> what do you think? Wait, is that our time ship? It looks... It's pretty rough. Yeah, I know. We found her like this a few years ago. We've been working to make repairs, but every time the time loop hits... Everything resets. Exactly. It takes both of us working at full capacity to get it even close to running. But then, everything is reset and blown to pot. So, what do we do? Ah, you see, that's where you come in. Even if we can fix the ship, we can't get it out because time is sealed off so tightly. So we need you to trip the loop. What does that mean? Just cause a disturbance, something large. There's an anomaly that's triggering the day to start over, and you need to disrupt it. When you do, the loop will dissolve. A cleft in time should open right in front of us, and we'll just have barely enough time to finish and sail through. Which anomaly? We don't know. Could be anything. It might have to do with flight. I mean, there's an unusually high number of flying anomalies in this reality. But that's not for sure. It'll have to be trial and error. Leave no stone unturned. You can do this, son. Barring interference from Marissa, that is. Who's Marissa? Oh, haven't you met your father's girlfriend? She's not my girlfriend, Victor. 
It's the woman at the door earlier. She's a time walker and in charge of this reality. She hates us. Me in particular. I think I can handle your crazy ex. Ah, the ignorant optimism of youth. You remind me of me at your age. I don't remind you of anyone, Victor. Alex! But, Dad, he... Son, stop! I know this is hard for you, but we need to trust Victor. We have to work together. Can you handle that? Yes, but he is... I asked, can you handle that? You're my first officer, Alex. This is not a request. Yes, sir. All right. Victor can brief you further. Excellent. Uh, shall I point you to the... Listen, you may have deceived my dad into believing you're some kind of reformed ex-supervillain or something, but I know you, Victor. You're up to something. You really still believe me to be the villain. It's just what you do. Every time we've ever trusted you, you've betrayed Your us. Your father and I simply had a fundamentally different philosophy on the purposes of time travel. Though we are beginning to agree... Do you remember what I told you all those years ago in the Minotaur's lair? You were just lying. It's what you do. You've really never wondered why no one ever talks about her? About your mother? No, you're just using me. Perhaps. <laughs> but the fact remains, I have not lied to you about this. Fine, I'll make you a deal. Keep an open eye after you trip the loop. If you see something... interesting... You listen to what I have to say. And what am I looking for? Oh, I'm not one to spoil the surprise. Just <laughs> something that proves I'm right. You'll know it when you see it. And if I don't see anything? I go away. Far away. Deal? I don't know. There has to be a catch. No catch. Unless you're not man enough. But then you'll never know if I was lying or not. And you'll never know if you could have been rid of me. Fine. I'll take your bet, Victor. But you're wrong. My dad has nothing to hide. Of course, of course. But come now. We have a busy day to repeat over. Shall we? Whatever. And so there I was, in my element, acting heroic. Well, it was actually more complicated than that. <laughs> hmm. Let's see. Disruption. Uh, disruption? Hey! Everybody, check out my new hover bike! Hmm. Hover bike, you say? <laughs> because although everything happened the same way every day, I had no idea of knowing which anomaly, if disrupted, would trip the loop. Excuse me, sir. Spare some change. Uh, not right now. I don't have any change. Anything would help, sir. Uh, not right now. I don't have time. I. Hover bike! I'm sorry, I have to go. <laughs> hey, come here! Give me that bike! I... Hey, well, what? No! It's his mine! Oh, give me that bike! I should got out of it! Stop, thief! That man over there, he is a thief! <laughs> I did it! I did it! Look at me, everybody! I'm disrupting space-time! I... Then what's all the fuss about? Uh, yeah, what's all the fuss? <laughs> oh, uh, hi, officers. I was just... Oh, officers, uh, thank goodness you're here. Uh, this man stole my hover bike. Oh, stealing a hover bike, eh? Yeah, uh, stealing a hover bike. Wait, no, it's not what it looks like. I. We're going to have to ask you to come with us. Yeah, yeah, come with us. Well, no, listen... I'm doing this for the greater good. You believe me, right? Just perfect. <laughs> the good news? The time loop would always rescue me from whatever scrapes I got myself into. The bad news? Facing Dad and Victor. Back again, I see. How did it go? Fine. <laughs> ah, harder than we thought, was it? You went for the hoverbike guy, didn't you? <laughs> ah, yes, the low-hanging fruit. Some of the most famous events from history taking place concurrently with us on this rock, and you go for the hoverbike guy. All right, you know what? <laughs> You're doing fine, son. Just try something bigger. Ha, huh, bigger. There was revolutionary bigger. We hold these truths to be so.
Start and change, sir. Not now. I'm trying to concentrate. Oh, don't you look all fancy today with your dark glasses and leather jacket? It's because I'm going to steal the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> no, you ruddy well or not. No, 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 let go. Oh, come on. You guys are British. What do you even care? And there was, stop the invention of flight, bigger. Who are you? I'm here to steal your plane. What? I said I'm here to steal your... Oi! Got any change? What? No, I... Hold that thought. Aha! Gotcha! What? Who are... Ah! Sorry, Orville. It's for the greater good. But I'll pull... Excuse me? You crashed this plane? Yeah? You need a license to do that. Oh, come on. I need a license to crash a plane? On your feet there, sir. Yeah, on your feet. And no matter what, these guys were always there. Every time. And it repeated over and over and over again. Every single day. Check out my new cover bag. I'm sorry, sir. There's a noise ordinance in this neighborhood. Come with us. Yeah, come with us. I'm sorry, sir. You can't have a llama parked within a hundred feet of this gazebo. Come with us. Yeah, come with us. Excuse me, sir. You can't use a particle accelerator within 20 feet of a pregnant woman. Right this way. Yeah, right this way, Prince Alex. Wait, what did you call me? Uh... Idiot. Oh, oh so you guys are time walkers. I see. Wait, come back. It's no use, kid. It's like trying to reason with a brick wall. What? Who's here? Show yourself. Whoa, easy there, Trigger. I come in peace. Oh, sorry. It's just been one of those days. Over and over and over again. I get it. I spent a week in Morocco one night. Wait a sec. Aren't you... Howard Hughes, eccentric millionaire playboy at your service. Uh, what are you doing in jail? Well, turns out you can only fly so many loop-de-loops over this island without a license. Uh-huh. What are you doing? Escaping. What's it look like? Oh, that's right. You're an inventor. And have money. You could help us. Sure, kid, sure. Hand me that Phillips head. Yeah. So, I have to ask. You and Marilyn Monroe, was that ever a thing? You or... know, now that's a funny story. Howard, come in. Howard. Eddie, where you at? Approaching pickup point. 20 seconds. Perfect. Oh, and hey, after, I was thinking you and me could. Focus, Howard. Roger that, over and out. Wait, was that... Was that Hedy Lamar? The one and only kid. Hmm. Can you just put your finger right here? Of course. Uh, what is this thing anyway? Four, three, two, one. Ow! What the heck, man? Hedy, it was beautiful. Blew a hole right in the roof of my cell. And my finger. <laughs> well, that's my ride. Wait, you're not taking me with you? <laughs> Sorry, Trigger. See you in the funny papers. Eddie, let's roll. No, wait, but come back. <sighs> Perfect. So, how's it coming? I, uh, well, I'm thinking about sheep. That well, huh? <sighs> sheep? There's a sheep guy, and uh, I thought maybe I could lead his sheep into town and... John, do you want to hear any more of this bad idea? <laughs> Son, maybe we should switch out. You and me on ship duty, and Victor goes out. Uh, no, we... I can do this. Alex, we can't risk this. Oh, it's all right, John. I'm sure young Alexander here is just trying to prove himself, amongst other things. I'm happy to take over if he can. But no, I can do this. Son, we want to help you. I need to get back to work. What? Let him go. That boy puts too much on himself. 
a family trait, I suppose. How do I do this? Honey, for your thoughts. Oh, not you. Listen, I don't have any money, okay? And I'm really not in the mood to talk. You're interesting. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, I've been watching you. Trying really hard, whatever it is you're doing. What do you mean? <laughs> whatever day you're out here running around doing something strange. <laughs> you remember past today? Well, like, you remember? Of course I do. How? How do you remember? What? Don't think some girl from the street? Uh, no, no, not that. I'm just glad to meet someone else. Uh, you haven't noticed anything strange lately, have you? Oh, um, gee, I don't know. Right. I mean, causing things to repeat. That's the same question the others ask me. I haven't seen nothing. Wait, others? There are others like you. Of course there are. What's the matter with you? Can I meet them? Can I talk to them? I don't know. Uh, no, listen, please. I'm desperate. That much is evident. Uh, please, I need this to work. Uh, plus, I'm a time traveler. I can help. Well, I'm not sure if they're like you. But, all oh, right, you've got a name. It's Alex. What's yours? Just call me... Mez. <laughs> Hey, where did John go? I thought we were going to do the commercial. He got a message and just ran off. I hope everything is okay. So, what horrible product are we doing this week? Uh, Lebowitz and Sons patent-pending beauty mask. Just 30 minutes a day will take the rash away? This thing? Oh, it looks terrifying. It looks like a gas mask. <laughs> All right, let me see it. What's it do? According to this paper, wearing it for 30 minutes a day will give you clean and glowing skin. Well, let's just take a look in here, and yep, it's lined with lead. Oh, <laughs> really? Please. We're seriously, we though, can do. we can't keep pushing products like this. Well, we don't have to worry about that anymore. Why? What happened? Leibowitz and Sons pulled, and they didn't even say why. Well, I'm sure we have others lined up, don't we? <laughs> Not anymore. They all pulled. Vitamin donuts, 7 up for babies, the x-ray nightlight, even McGrath's bacon. Oh, that one doesn't sound so bad. Uh, until you realize that there is 0% bacon in McGrath's bacon. So what do we do? I, I don't know. I mean, without sponsorship, we can't pay for studio time. And without studio time... We can't get home. Do you think you know who is behind this? Oh, anything's possible. You don't... you don't mean Voldemort, do you? Wait a sec. I have an idea. Why don't we sell our own products? What do you mean? Well, we have airtime, don't we? Why don't we just make our own products and sell them? That's how we can make money. Oh, I don't know, son. Oh, come on. It'll be fun. What would we even sell? How about... Alexander's Confidence Spray. <laughs> Only $39.99 a bottle. Plus tax. <laughs> and shipping. Where did you get that? Here's the script. Everyone take one. You already had these made? Alex, what on earth are you... Oh, come on, come on, it'll be fun. Eddie, can we take it from the top of the commercial? Yep. <laughs> and now, it's time for a brief word from our sponsor. Alexander's Confidence Spray. <laughs> Is your confidence down and out? Are you an average-looking man with no prospects? Do you spend your Friday nights at home with your mom's knitting? Well, never fear, because Alexander's Confidence Spray is here to say... No, no more. more! Alexander's Confidence Spray? Really? Jess? Maybe we just don't do a commercial this week. You know, since we don't actually have a real sponsor. Listen, I've been working on this product for a long time, and I think it's got potential. It's actually really good. I tried it this morning. Wait, you you knew about this? Yeah. Alex let me buy his very first bottle. See? Just spray this over your entire body and you feel ready to take on the world. Wait, let me see that. Oh, uh, it's still being tested. Arthur, how much did Alex charge you for this? Oh, I got it for a steal. Only $30. $30? For a bottle of... Tap water. No, no, you mean 
Alexander's confidence prize. This is nothing but water. You're trying to pull a fast one on Arthur and our listeners. And it was working. How could you? Arthur, Alexander's confidence spray isn't real. Well, can we at least sing the song? Of course, you made up a song. Alexander's special spray, it'll make you awesome. Oh dear. Okay, if there are any real sponsors of any time period who would like their product or business advertised, please get in touch with us at timetravelersradio at gmail.com. As you can see, the pickings right now are extremely slim, so uh, please reach out. And now, back to our feature presentation this evening on WPNR, the Time Travelers Radio Show, Trip the Loop Fantastic. That was my line. Oh, sorry, I mean, you were gone for a while. <laughs> oh, wow, this is your workshop? It's huge. How do you keep this secret? Very... Carefully. Eddie, bring me the five eights. Mares. Hey, everybody. Mares is back. Where you been, kid? Oh, you know, uh, here and there. Enigmatic as always. I love it. Eddie, hey, Mares is back. Uh, coming. Who's this? Uh, this is Alex. He notices the strangers, too. Put her there. Howard Hughes. Nice to meet you. Yeah, we've met. Yesterday? Don't you remember? You almost blew my finger off. Oh, that's right. You look taller behind bars. Anyway, what's your gimmick, kid? What? I mean, what are you doing here? Alex is a time traveler. A time traveler? Now that's really something. Eddie, this is Alex. He's a time traveler. Alex, this is Hollywood starlet and inventor, Hedy Lamar. I know, you invented Wi-Fi. <laughs> Please do make your acquaintance, Alex. Uh, Mares, any updates? Nothing, no. What are you guys doing here? What's it look like? Trying to escape? With <laughs> varying results. AKA, we have no idea what we're doing, but now that we've got a time traveler, well, that's really cooking with gas. If you get my drift. Oh, you really a time traveler? Uh, yeah. Hot dog! What did I tell you, Hetty? I had a good feeling about this kid. Didn't I say that? Do you know how to escape this mess? Well, kind of. Great. Let me show you around, kid. This warehouse comes with everything you could possibly need for an escape on an epic scale. What do you mean? Mares found it. It was already full of anything we could need for an escape. Great, right? Yeah. All we had to do was fill it with people. You've met me and Hetty, so may I present Marie Curie, Nobel award-winning scientist and general radiation enthusiast. Marie, this is Alex. He's a time traveler. How fascinating. Wow. Yeah, hi. I... What was that? Ah, yes, the other member of our team. A bit temperamental when you first meet him, but a real sweetheart once you get to know him. And we still haven't gotten to know him. With one of the greatest military minds in history, may I present the one, the only, Napoleon Bonaparte. That's why. Uh, hello, Napoleon. Que c'est imbécile? Tous sont les jardins. What's he saying? No clue. Hard to make it out through his... him complex. So, what have you guys tried? Everything. Hetty makes the designs, Marie figures out how to power them, Napoleon <laughs> provides commentary. But hey, with a time traveler involved. Can you really help us? Well, in theory, yes. Great, kid, you're in charge. Wait, what? Yeah, why not? You know all about this weird time stuff, right? Well, yeah, kind of, kid. I make movies, I fly planes, I throw money at things. That's what I do. Let me know what you need, and you'll have it. Eddie! The kid's gonna take over! Honestly, Howard, I'm right here. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Alex, what do we need? Well, we need to trip the loop. Figure out what's causing the day to... Wait. What is that? Hmm. Oh, great eye, kid. Presenting the Hughes H4 Hercules. A.K.A. the Spruce School. A name I hate. <laughs> the largest plane to ever have been built by me. Well, what's it doing here? That's just what we asked, but we didn't look a gift horse in the mouth. The only problem... It can't fly. It flew once, Hetty. Once. <laughs> but not now. But it could fly again. This is it. What is? It's big and it flies. I bet if we get the goose to flight... The Hercules. We'll trip the loop and escape. Are you certain of this? 
It's the only thing that makes sense. But we are missing parts, many of which are under lock and key in the town. All the more reason to believe I'm right. We get those parts. We make this fly. We escape. Hmm. We'll need recon then. Mares, can you take Alex to the locations with the parts? I suppose... Oh, she's just being modest. Best little cat burglar we've ever had. Well, we'll leave you geniuses to it. Marie, can I borrow some uranium for a personal project? You're not allowed to ask what for. Absolutely not. Wow, I, uh... You said you just needed help. Uh, Yeah, I... Thank you. Yeah, yeah, don't get all mushy on me. But how did you find this place? These individuals? They? I'm just good with people. Come on, we're running out of time or whatever. Uh, yeah. Right. And so, working together, we retrieved the parts we needed. We tried a lot of different things to get the goose off the ground. None of which worked. We even tried a nuclear option, as suggested by Marie. All right, Marie, we're ready. Fire it up. Run for your life! It's gonna blow! But we were having fun. <sighs> oh, come on, Prince Alex. Just stop right there. It's a dead end. Yeah, <laughs> a dead end. Wait, what? Oh, wait, what? Didn't expect us, did you, boys? See you in the funny papers. Well, that was unexpected. Yeah, unexpected. You know you don't have to do that, Roy. Uh, do what? Oh, come on. <laughs> and there was something so familiar about it all. That was amazing. Did you see their faces? That was great, Trigger. Anyone up for a little sightseeing diversion? I see the Vestal Virgins are about to light their door. Howard? What? It's cultural. We still have more parts to collect. So we need to head back? Yes. Great, with a quick sightseeing detour. Set machine mid on Berlin. And then there was Mares, the most unusual of my new friendships. She could be cold and callous, but there was a warmth there. In fact, I really grew to like her. And no, not in that way. I'd learned my lesson. Ah. <laughs> anyway, no. Mares and I were just friends. I also felt very protective of her. When time shattered, she lost everything. But she was tough and driven. (laughs) All right, all right, all right. right. Here's one. Would you rather fight one horse-sized chicken or a dozen chicken-sized horses? (laughs) Boy, what's a chicken? Seriously? A small, flightless bird occasionally changes into other things. No, I've never heard of it. Huh. And your parents never made it for you before, or...? Oh, sorry. It's all right. We didn't get along. I know the feeling. I thought you and your dad were best mate. We were. But he's changed. It's Victor, I I know it. He's got his hooks in him, but I... But what? Victor told me something in that labyrinth. I just can't shake it. About what? My mother supposedly died when I was little, but it's like there's this block, a a haze, or... Well, maybe after this we can work on getting the old man to open up and, um, tell you about it. Yeah, good luck with that. He's always been very good at keeping secrets. I lost me mum too, when I was little. Really? I thought you lost both your parents in the shadow. Well, I did. I lost everyone, didn't I? But she died when I was a baby. It was just me and my dad, so I know how it can be. Thank you for telling me. Um, yeah, you, you, you just keep going on about your chickens or whatever they are. Hey! Look alive, kid. Any intel? Uh, yeah, this warehouse looks good. It's under lock and key, so probably what we need. Perfect. We've got almost everything else we need, so we can... What the? Alex? 
Dad, what happened? Oh, nothing good. You all right, John? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Was that the loop resetting? Why did it come so early? You haven't told him. Told me what? Son, the loop has been fraying. What does that mean? Because of what happened. Time only has so much to work with in our reality. Just one day. The problem is that because the loop is repeating so much, it's wearing out. The day is beginning shorter and shorter, which really has us worried. Well, what could happen? Nothing good, that's for sure. The longer we stay here, the more we risk not finishing the ship because we are literally running out of time. And if we run out of time, well, no one has ever crossed that threshold before, but all the data points to poof. (laughs) Poof? Ceasing to exist. And you didn't want to tell me this because? It honestly wasn't an immediate threat. We also didn't want to burden you any further. Well, how much time do we have? Five hours until poof. What? (laughs) This... This isn't the normal decay cycle. This is someone tampering with the loop. Which means we're close. We need to escape tonight. But, but, but we're not even close to ready. Can you even repair the ship that fast? We'll have to cut corners. But we'll make it. But, but I mean, we... We don't have a choice, son. We either escape tonight or not at all. Whatever you're doing, you need to do it now. And of course, keep your eyes open. Right. Napoleon, hand me the five-eighths. Oui, oui, mon capitaine. I said five-eighths, man, not three-fourths. Tu sais, j'ai des choses fugitives. And you're sure we have everything? As sure as we can be. We've collected everything we can do to get this hunk of junk in the air. I heard that. (laughs) All right, well, let's review the plan. As soon as we get this thing airborne, we bank hard and head for the other side of the island. There's an embankment we can run up to to get the ship from the ocean. And your father and this Victor will have everything settled? That's the hope. All right, no thanks to the wonder of Waterloo here, I managed to get everything set in record time. We're ready, shall we? The sooner we get this over with, the sooner we can get back to the important things in life. Like dancing. (laughs) What do you say, Hetty? You and me, when this Ah. is over, tripping the light fantastic? Howard, the world is about to end. How about we put a pin in this? Always happy. All right, let's get moving here. Wait, where's Mares? I thought she was with you. Mares? Mares? Try the radio. Mares, come in. You copy. Mares! Oh. Ow. I... Ow. oh no. You sure about this, kid? We've got less than 30 minutes. I'm positive. She's in trouble. Get the goose. The Hercules. In the air, and Mares and I will meet you. The scanner says she's at the Agora. Go. Roger that. Over and out. Mares! Mares! Where are you? Over here, Alice. Mares, you're all tied up. Who did this? I... Wait, who are you? My name is Marissa, and you must be Alex Farnsworth. Guards? I just knew you'd come if there was something heroic to be done, just like your father. Yes, Alex Farnsworth, I want to have a word with you. Nice to finally meet you, Marissa. Oh, we must just be meeting. No one who's met me before thinks it's nice to meet me. Leave Mares out of this. All we want to do is leave and fix what's happened. Ah, well, you see, all I want is to keep you here. So we have a conflict of interest. Oh, come on. You know we never intended for any of this to happen. Well, that's all very nice, but you don't have to worry about it anymore. When the loop resets tonight, you will cease to exist. Kind of like a fun little alarm clock, but where people are shredded to pieces down to their atoms. Yikes. (laughs) But won't that include you (laughs) too? Don't be silly. I'll be long gone by then. Just needed to cross a few T's, dot a few Y's, that sort of thing. Ensuring the biggest threat to our reality was contained. We're your biggest threat? You, Victor. Your father. Yeah, what's the story there? Oh, nothing. Your father and I used to be on excellent terms, but you know how it is with close relationships. 
time can get in the way. So when I heard our grand and illustrious leader was handing out assignments and one of them was to ensure your father's imprisonment and torture, well, now that was something I just couldn't pass up. You're insane. All time walkers are a little crazy by nature, dear. I am no exception. Well, now that you're trapped here, I think we'll call it good. What, am I? My team is just about to trip the loop, and my dad and Victor will have our ship ready in no time. Are you certain? Well, no matter. It's always good to have an insurance policy. Wait. What have you done? Well, let's just say it never hurts to have an angry mob at your disposal. <whistles> go, my pretties, go to them. Uh, no, I... And don't even think about any heroics. Guards! <coughs> No odd feelings, eh, Prince Alex? Yeah, no odd feelings. <laughs> Pre flight checklist complete, Captain. Excellent. Everyone buckled in? Napoleon, how's that booster seat? C'est bon. Excellent. Well, in that case. C'est quoi? There's a very large group of angry people running this way very quickly. That's our cue. Close the hatch, Marie. Test one, test two, contact. Ignition! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What? Uh-oh. Marie, I thought you said this would work. Don't take that tone with me, Howard Hughes. Well, then, why won't my plane start? Hey! Get off of there! This is an American classic! Have some respect! That's very expensive wood! It's burnt laminate! Is that really relevant now, Hetty? <laughs> Kid, we're in trouble! Do you hear me, Trigger? We're in trouble! We're in trouble! Well then, looks like we're all set. This reality is about to go under. We must abandon ship. Come, daughter. Yes, mother. Wait. Mother? Yeah. Sorry about that, Alex. No odd feelings, eh? Wait. What is happening? Your mother's dead. Oh, she didn't lie. Her mother is dead. Or our mother, to be exact. In order to time walk, my people need a token. Mare's is my token. Or should I say, Marissa? I chose to pluck a different version of myself off the timeline and raise her as my own daughter. Then, when I'm gone, she will take her place as the rightful Marissa, and then pluck herself out of the timeline once again. As a rule, time walkers are immortal. I've just chosen a very unique form of immortality. Sorry, Alex. I guess us Marissas just have a thing for Farnsworth men. Guards, keep an eye on him, and make sure John and Victor can't do anything heroic either. Yes, my lady. Yes, my lady, indeed. Well, I don't think so. <laughs> Back off! Stealing from an officer, eh? Do you even know how to use that weapon? Yeah. Do you even know how to use it? It's a big, giant blaster gun. I think I can handle it. Put your hands up, or I'll shoot. Yeah, but you see, it's also non-lethal. <laughs> Still packs quite a wallop, though. <laughs> You're an idiot, you know that. What? Don't say. Oh, oh, my back. Oh, my back, too. Ah, old people? An old person gun. Well, I guess that works. So, uh, bye. Oh, you fools! After him! Yes, my uh, grace. Right away, my grace. Idiots! Idiots! Go, my daughter! him. I'll have to restore these two. Yes, mother. We're coming. Mm, yeah, we're coming. Hello? Hello, Trigger. Blast. Line's dead. Oh, this is not good. What do we do? Regardless, we only have ten minutes left. Well... Howard Hughes isn't one to take things lying down. There has to be something. Like what? Like, like belief. Howard. No, listen. The Hercules was never about practicality. It was about a dream. 
the American dream that no matter how difficult things get, there is always a way. But Howard, we've tried everything and... And the alternative? Believe. Fine. Okay, here we go. Believe. Believe. Believe! Hughes, come in. Howard, are you there? Come on. You look like you're in a hurry. Oh, well, look who it is. What do you want? Ever get the feeling, Alex, that you're fighting against the wrong thing? I do sometimes, but then my mum points me in the right direction again. Maybe you just need someone to point you in the right direction. I... Uh... <laughs> Haven't you noticed the fantastic scenario we gave you? Scenario? You get to be the hero. Over and over and over again. We even gave you the team just like your old one. And your dad and Victor, <laughs> we could arrange for them to go away. You could even forget all this and just stay here with me. Well, that's a nice offer. But as it turned out, all I had to do was trust my team. What? No! Consider the loop tripped. No! That's not possible! Never bet against a long shot, Mares. When I saw the goose, I knew. It wasn't the goose, you idiot! Huh? What do you mean? It's right there, flying! And the loop is dissolving, it's... You're really thick sometimes, you know that! What? I... Oh, this is my responsibility! My mum's gonna kill me! You could come with us. You don't have to stay here. I don't have the same choice as you, Alex. Mares, please. You really want to leave? Yes, Mares. Mares, please. Oi, you lot, here's your man. He's the one you want right here. Oh, come on, Mares. See you around, Farnsworth. This is it. Reverse auxiliary power to the secondary coupling. Power reverse. Fuel levels stable. We've got five minutes, John. Where is that kid? I'm sure he's fine. I hope so. He has too much of his mother in him. He'll come through. Of course he will. Who'd have thought that you and I would be back here, just like old times, pulling out last-minute heroics? Indeed. You know, I'm glad things are better. Have you given any more thought to my proposal? Not now, Victor. Still some of your father in you, I see. Listen... Once we're safe and not non-existent, maybe we can talk in private. I don't want Alex involved. Of course. Of course. Dad, are you there? Come in. Son, where are you? Heading your way. What is that sound? Well, the good news is that I tripped the loop. The bad news is I have a mob of roughly 500 people chasing me. Coming your way. I retract my earlier statement. And what's that? And that is the spruce goose that is likely about to crash very near you. Oh, anything else? <sighs> we'll take care of it. Just get here now. Alex? Alex! Alex? Dad? Dad! this weird explosion, and suddenly the goose was airworthy. Just like back in 47. Just like magic. Magic? Duck! 
They're firing on us. What do we do? Here, use this gun and fire back. What? Just do it! <laughs> what? what? Octogenarians? Keep firing! And babies! <laughs> so many hits, one What? You want kids, right? But not like this! It's some kind of time weapon! <laughs> what do we do? We're outnumbered! C'est de nouveau! Ah, hello! We have to go now! We'll never make it! No, Trigger. You're going to make it. We're not. What? We'll cover you. Go save the world, kid. Well, but I... Go! <laughs> Looks like we're not gonna get that dance. Only time will tell, Howard. Ready, team? <laughs> For the kid. Fire! <laughs> Is that kid? We're sitting ducks. It's now or never, John. We are not leaving without Alex. Okay, let's go. Alex, you're all right. What's wrong? Nothing. You look like you've seen a ghost. <laughs> well, no matter. We can chat about it later. Shall we avoid certain annihilation? Yes, we shall. First we get out of here, then we find the others. I hope they're not too far under. Engines to full power. And just who do you think you're giving that order to? Well, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> Fine. John! Oh, look, John. Marissa's here. Yikes! That's our cue. <laughs> Fire on that ship! Five seconds until rift closes, John. Four, three... Two, hit it! No! Ah, shut your yap. <laughs> come in, come in. This is Ernie. Yeah, we have a bit of a situation on 47. The eagle has flown the coop. Repeat, the eagle has flown the coop. That was the Time Traveler's Radio Show, Episode 7, Trip the Loop Fantastic. The Time Traveler's Radio Show is a special production by WPNR at Radio City in New York and was recorded in front of a fake studio audience. A special thanks to our sponsor, uh... Alexander's Confidence Spray. Make sure to tune in next week for Episode 8, The Friendly Fire Paradox. The Time Traveler's Radio Show was created by Cody Cutler and Jacob Ernest. This episode was written, produced, and directed by Cody Cutler, with a commercial by Kelly Cook. It starred W. Benjamin Hyde as John, Adam Packard as Alex, and Dane Allred as Victor. It also starred Tommy Brown as Howard Hughes, on Dean Morgan Garner as Mares, and Hedy Lamar, Julie Dowd as Marissa, Julie Graham as Marie Curie, Jacob Baird as Police Number One and Orville and Wilbur Wright. Jeff Simpson as Napoleon, Police Two and Greek Man. Lorianne Paulson as Robin. Kelly Cook as Jessica. Darcy Ramirez as Navy. Chris Rollins as Arthur. And Cody Cutler as Thomas Jefferson. The production sound mixer was Marcus Richardson. Sound design was by Cody Cutler and music by Richard Williams and Jerem Hansen. The executive producer was Cody Cutler, with a special thanks to the Hive Collaborative in Provo, Utah, Kyle Clausen, and associate producer Ron Bateman. Follow the Time Traveler's radio show on Instagram and Twitter, or like us on Facebook. Stay up to date with everything Time Traveler related over at www.timetravelersradio.com. Thank you for listening, and as always, see you next time. Snips!